What's up guys, Static in the Attic. In the last video, I asked you guys what you wanted me to do a video on about mud flood. I can only do one at a time and I think this is a good place to start and a good foundation moving forward. Miss Monk asked me, do you seriously think that the Mormons built their chapel and the Salt Lake City mega magnificent structures? All right, let's just do a full history of this and start at the beginning. We have all of these ancient megalithic sites all around the world that have everything from impossibly huge stones like this to this multi-sided, irregular-shaped jigsaw puzzle. Help me out here. I can't think of the name of it. But they fit together perfectly, and... It boggles the mind to figure out how they did this with these big, huge stones. We definitely cannot recreate this today. Just to use the Inca as an example, this is the wall of Cusco. And you can see that you've got the ancient architecture on the right. And then the Inca just shored up the wall there. Or maybe even somebody sooner than them. But when the Inca were alive, they were saying that this was an ancient culture. And they they didn't build this. It's the same with Teotihuacan in Mexico. The Aztecs didn't know who the Mayan were that built Teotihuacan, the civilization before them. We call them a Mayan because quackademics just have to <laughs> sound like they know what they're talking about, but nobody actually knew who they were, what their name was. But you can definitely tell which culture did what. You have the ancient megalithic, and then you have the Incan that did all of the smaller stones. Now, the step terraces of Oleantambo, that's just a lot of sweat and hard work digging out a hill. There's nothing sophisticated about the actual building of it. It's just field stone stacked up, but... It shows a level of a sophisticated society to have the proper planning and knowledge of doing this step ter terracing. So this definitely wasn't some backwater heathen society that the Roman Catholic Church tried to paint it to be. Here's a good picture to use as an example. You just start at the bottom. We're going to use the mountain in the back. You start at the bottom. You dig straight back. 10 feet level and then you pile up some stone and then you dig straight back 10 feet again from that level and you go back and then you keep repeating that layer after layer all the way up the mountain if you've got 100 guys working and each one of them digs out a 10 foot by 10 foot section each day that's a thousand feet across the side of the mountain per day in 50 days you would have 50 layers of this, 1,000 feet wide. They had way more than 100 guys working on this. They get, had thousands of people working on this. So it's a lot of sweat and hard work, but yes, it can definitely be replicated today. There's no mystery how those stones are cut. And some people have said, you know, there's no way of dating anything. Well, no, you can't date it exactly, but you can tell who came first and then who came second. So that's what's going on in America. Let's get back over to Europe. So you have the ancient megaliths over there, like Baalbek and all that, uh, all of that. That's the ancient megalithic age. And then you had the ancient Greeks. Well, let's just use the name the Mediterranean culture because you had the rise and fall of the Mycenaeans in 2000 BC, a full thousand years later. You have the ancient Greeks in 1000 BC, then the Romans in 0 BC. And now here's the crazy thing. Is for thousands of years, they were able to build buildings like this. It's not quite the megalithic, but these are huge stones. Very well made, evidently. And when they were found by the 18th century, they were pretty well ruins. And it's the same thing for Northern Africa the Middle East, and, you know, the Greek and Italian areas. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on this time frame right now. And keep in mind, that is thousands of years that I'm talking about that they were building these big ancient structures. 
but you can see the columns are made out of two or three foot sections stacked on top of each other. We're going to talk about technologies and methods of building something like this here in a little bit, but first this is what I want to point out. We'll cover that after the Middle Ages. We have the fall of the Roman Empire in official dating of 500 AD, and then everything goes dark for 800 years, and then we start getting accounts in the 1300s right after a major catastrophe happened. So people were building structures like this for thousands of years, and then everything fall, falls into the Dark Ages, and you have the fairy tale story of, you know, the knights of the round table and the Disney castles with drawbridges and the poor farmers and everybody's illiterate and there's no record of anything. There's literally like 10 books a year written by the Catholic church for 700 years. And that's all of the knowledge of the known world for 700 years. Come on. It really doesn't make sense that 700 years go by. And then all of a sudden, all of these peasants decide to build the Santa Maria del Fiore. Owing to a resurgence of interest in ancient Greek and Roman culture during the early Renaissance, artists began to hold the art of Greco-Roman antiquity in high regard and less like the style of the medieval period. Now, I've heard several different accounts on this. One of them says that they didn't have any plans whatsoever. They just drew it out in the dirt and they took off building and then when they got up to the top, nobody knew how to put a dome on. And it's set like that for 50 years. And then Wiki's always good for a laugh. City Council approved the design of Amphalmo Cabillo for the new church in 1294. I mean, come on. City Council approved the design. That is such a modern concept with our big, huge, all-powerful government. Back then, the church was the government. If they wanted to build, <laughs> they could build whatever they wanted. So, a long story short, it takes 50 years for Filippo Brunelleschi to come along. And he went and studied the Panthe Pantheon for years and finally figured out that he had a method of doing it. But his was pretty complicated using all of these chains and everything and definitely wasn't up to snuff of what the ancient, you know, Greeks, Romans, all of those guys were up to. The Pantheon is a dome of very well cut stone holding it up as to where the Florence Cathedral Dome has these chains around it to keep the outward pressure, to keep the dome from pushing out and pushing the walls out from underneath it. So there's definitely a reset there they couldn't find a qualified person to design and build the dome on the top of this church. Now, official history tells us this was just the Black Death. I'm not going to go into it right now, but I've read plenty of examples describing the crazy weather, flooding, drought, earthquakes, comets, meteors, all kinds of crazy stuff. So there was nothing going on for 700 years, and then they just went straight to this because they decided that the old stuff was cool, retro so let's just go through the steps of what has to happen. Just like with today's modern skyscrapers, with any house or building, you have to dig a good foundation. For something the size of a cathedral, you're probably going to want to go down to hit bedrock. But having a solid foundation was talked about all the way back in the Bible. So, you know, maybe they did do it like what I'm showing here. I'm not sure. Just keep in mind that all buildings have to have a good, solid foundation, especially these big, huge cathedrals. Now, this cathedral is big, magnificent, awe-inspiring, but let's break it down into its component parts. We'll start out with the structural part of the walls, the simplest part of this. You're talking, you know, two foot by two foot by four foot stones. All cities are built on rivers, and if you're lucky, you've got limestone right on the river, so you break it off, you throw it in a barge, and float it down. If you're not that lucky, then you do it the hard way and do it with horse and buggy. Now, you see how big of a stone that is back there? That is probably four feet tall, eight feet deep, and four or five feet wide. 
if you were building a wall that was two feet thick, then that right there would give you about 10 feet of surface area. But we'll do the math on how much it takes in a minute. So you've got your laborers, your lowest of the low or even slaves, depending where you're at and what's going on, I guess. But at the quarry, they're going to bust it out into chunks like this. Guys, we've been in the Iron Age for thousands of years. Being able to bust rock ain't nothing new. I'm going to let you guys watch what three old guys can do in one afternoon with hand tools while I explain this. Just like today, we have our laborers that are digging the ditches and doing all the little grunt tasks while hopefully I'm inside doing wainscoting and crown molding, but not always. The same back then, you had your laborers or slaves, grunts of all types doing the rough stuff. And then you have your highly skilled guys doing the honed in stuff, the high pay guys. Now, guys, all through the Middle Ages, all throughout history, rich people have liked to build buildings. That costs money, and the people that know how to do them get paid very well. So, just like today, it would have been a very high-paying job, especially if you could do the finer details, which I'll get to in a minute, but we'll finish up our, uh, our old guys at the quarry here. But there's not much to it. They either saw cut or they bust it out of the side of the mountain. Then they start squaring it up. And then they start cutting it into production blocks. So that the guys that are on the job site just start stacking them up. If you've got thousands of people working on this, you'd be amazed at how much you're going to get done. But that is just backbreaking work. Let's talk about some technology. Everybody knows what this is, right? This article is kind of funny. It says windmills and watermills are not new technologies. Both machines appeared in antiquity and the ones used in the early Middle Ages were technically no different from those, the ones in antiquity. However, the ancient civilizations like the Greeks and Romans hardly used them, possibly because of religious reasons and because of a large enough reservoir of human slave labor. Now, these are primarily used for wood saw mills and by the way, to build a cathedral, you're going to cut down a full forest for all of the scaffolding and all of the bracing you have to make out of wood in order to set the stone on top of for all of those arches. But I'll burn that bridge when we get to the skilled labor part of things. Mills of the first kind were erected so early as the 4th century in Germany on the River Ruhr, <laughs> the Ruhr River, for so, Ausinius speaks of water mills for cutting stone and not timber. It cannot be doubted that these were invented later for wood mills. Historian Pliny conjectures that the mill for cutting stone was invented in Korea. At least he know no building encrusted with marble of greater antiquity than the place of the King Mausolus of Halicarnassus. I guess it's from King Mausolus that we get the name Mausoleum. This edifice is celebrated by Vitruvius for the beauty of its marble, and Pliny gives an account of the different kinds of sand used for cutting it, for it is in the sand, he says, and not the saw which produces that effect. The latter presses down on the former and rubs it against the marble, and the coarser the sand is, the longer will be the time required to polish the marble which has been cut by it. Everybody knows what sandpaper is and sanding things, so they just literally used sand and then used finer sand for all the way down till you polish it. It's just like today with marble. They start out with a rougher sandpaper and then get finer as you go along. It also says that a 13th century manuscript shows a water wheel saw. I think right about now, everybody needs to be given some respect and some credit to their ancestors. They were smart enough to just use green energy from the very beginning. They, Guys, we've been selling oceans for thousands of years. Who knows how long they've had, you know, windmills, but sawmills on a river? These things have been around for who knows how long, probably thousands of years. 
And just like today, people were ingenuitive, so they came up with things like multiple saw blades. And you can still see these windmills and water wheels operating today. So you had grunts working the quarry. You had people like this dready dude that knows what he's doing, finishing out the blocks out on site. Then once it's shaped into production, then it goes to the actual installers that are working on the building. Everybody else is just out in the field cutting and labeling all of the pieces. The structural part of the building, all of the square blocks, that's not rocket science. And then you're going to have a higher grade worker carving out the column parts. Now for every thousand guys you got working on the simple stuff, you've got one guy whose only job is to do this intricate carving. He is the top notch cream of the cream, Donatello, Michelangelo type. If Michelangelo and his whole team of artists could find time to carve the huge statue of David out of marble, then I think somebody can find time to build this. I mean, Michelangelo and his team, it's just like anything else. Michelangelo gets the credit, but I'm sure he had a team of 200 artists working under him that were very talented, but of course the boss always gets all the credit. But they found the time to do all of this insanely detailed painting, carve the statue of David out of marble where all of the cathedrals are made out of limestone, which is much softer and easier to cut, and many other projects in their lifetime. Now, the finer carvings in the statues are unfortunately a lost art, but think about this, guys. We get 12 years of indoctrination and learn just enough to be productive out in the labor force. What if from the age we were born, we directed all of our attention into arts, carving, you know, carpentry? But you can see here that this is obviously not <laughs> from the Middle Ages with the skyscrapers and everything on the top. So people still carve out of limestone. Still, the big problem I have is they knew about windmills, sawmills, advanced stoneworking up till 500 AD. Everything was blank for 700 years, and then they went retroactive and decided that the buildings of antiquity were really cool. And all of a sudden, everybody could read and write again and started making notes of things. You know, I don't think I've even mentioned this. I, I need to just do a video on this alone. But we have the exact same events happening in 500 AD as 1300 AD. We've got the, the, the whole playlist. Earthquakes, meteors, drought, famine, and a, a plague on both of them. But the, history just writes it up as a plague and leaves everything else out. So to answer the original question, do I seriously think that the Mormons built their chapel in Salt Lake City mega magnificent structures? Now, I'm sure that everybody has seen this photo of where they were taking the antennas that pull electricity out of the air off. And then there's the big steel dome over beside it. And steel on that level is a product of the Industrial Revolution. And now here it is being halfway built. So you can't say that this photo is legit and the other photos are not legit just to make your story jive. So some of these photos were taken with different daguerreotypes, which is the type of camera that was used back in that day. And I'll do a whole video just on that alone. Here's the process, just like I described earlier. You've got the grunts working out in the quarry. And then you've got teams of horses hauling everything into the site. Sorry, I don't have a picture of the horses. Then once all of the rough cut stone is on site, then you start having the guys cut it and form it into production blocks. And then here you can see that they're on a river with their production plants powered by water doing whatever they need it to do. And then you have to dig down really deep for the foundation. And guys, I've seen the photo of the foundation halfway dug out. Not sure what was going on there. I'd have to see that photo again. I'd, I'd have to look at it. 
And then once they really get going, they break out the old school cranes with block and tackle and everything. And guys, you can get an amazing amount of leverage out of a block and tackle system. There's a guy on YouTube that pulls mature trees down, root wads and all, with rope, block, and tackle. I've also seen a guy in a backyard lifting like a one-ton stone by a cell. They say it took 50 years to build this, and I'm wondering why it took that long. It doesn't really seem like it should take that long to me. But guys, this is this was finished in, I think, 1892, and that's like five or six generations removed from the events of 1812. Those events that happened then paled in comparison to what happened in the 1300s. Now, that date could be off a couple hundred years, but it the progression since then makes sense when you study it. Now, it's kind of ironic that this all started off with us mud flooders saying that it's hard to believe that people were just dumb as a sack of hammers in the medieval times and then went straight from that to building huge elaborate cathedrals. We didn't just suddenly get smarter. Now, nutrition plays a whole big role in brains, but that's a different topic. But it went from the thought that it's kind of ridiculous to believe that gap between the Romans to the Gothic and Baroque style buildings. But now mud flutters are just acting like people couldn't build anything, period, when people have been building with stone for thousands of years. We have all of these catastrophic events happening at the given date of 500 AD. Civilization disappears for 700 years and then comes back with this. So that doesn't make sense at all. I still am not sure if it was all the same event. I could probably argue that case to where you had the fall of society at 500 AD, same year as 1300 AD, and then Brunelleschi, after 50 years of staring at the Pantheon, figured out how to build a dome that was quite inferior to the originals. That I would definitely call a reset. Not quite as bad as what Plato's talking about when he says that only the rude and unlettered are left among you and you remember nothing of the prior civilization. That one I'd call a full reset. So to answer the original question, yes, I think that the Mormons went out there and built everything in Salt Lake City. Shout out to Beans here. I know you were just joking around, but you just happened to <laughs> say this right before I was making this video. That's it for this one. If you guys want more answers where they're to be found, then stick around and watch my future vids. If you don't, then just keep asking more questions that bring up more questions and are answered by more questions. See you guys on the next one. Static out.